today we're talking about belts. Yay! I actually had this video, like the B-roll shot and planned out everything for a couple of weeks. And then the big daddy of heritage and workwear, Carl Morosky, decided to put out a video about a belt. So I figured I'd let that one marinate a little bit before I put mine out. He does a fantastic review of a Momotaro belt that is indigo dyed and that thing is sublime, but it's way out of my price range. And I'm guessing for most guys, 200 plus dollars is a ridiculous amount of money to spend on a belt. And to be honest with you, I rarely have spent over about 15 or $20 on a belt in my lifetime. I've gotten some good ones, I've gotten some bad ones, but in general, I don't know that I've ever been happy with a belt. So when it came time for me to get a new one, I decided that I would look for something that maybe was a little bit higher quality. I was originally thinking about 50 bucks was as much as I wanted to spend on a belt. And I started looking around, started doing my research, and the one I finally settled on was about 80 bucks. And I'm actually wearing it right now, so I gotta take it off. I settled on the working man's belt from American Benchcraft. So when I originally opened the box to check the belt out, I was pretty impressed, pretty nicely wrapped, I suppose, as nicely wrapped as something could be in a regular cardboard box, just stamped with American Benchcraft on the outside of it. But, you know, it had nice hang tag, came with some nice cards, a little info. It even had a card with some faces to put with the brand. I always think that's an interesting touch when somebody's willing to put their face on their product. To me, that says that they are proud of the product they are producing. But yeah, it looks good, it fits good, it feels good, it smells good, and that's ultimately what we really wanna get from a quality leather good, and this belt holds up to all of those things. American Benchcraft actually has a pretty decent social media presence, like they have a really good Instagram page, and they like to show videos of them actually making their products, so you can see the the hands that actually craft the product and you can see the process of you know cutting the leather uh cutting the holes putting in the rivets finishing the belt everything kind of from start to finish and not just belts but they actually make quite a few different products all handmade leather goods including wallets and that was part of the reason why i chose the american benchcraft belt because I actually have owned uh, this American Benchcraft wallet for a few years now, and I really love this thing. But anyways, this belt is nice and thick. It is vegetable tanned leather. It's pretty stiff uh, right out of the box, but you know, even over just a couple of weeks of wearing it, it's really starting to soften up. Very, very comfortable to wear, despite it being significantly thicker than any belt I've owned before. So just for comparison, this is the belt that I actually replaced, and this is one that uh, was made by Fossil. And uh, you know, I've had this thing for, gosh, I don't know, probably at least five years, uh, probably more than that. And you can see the thickness of it. When you compare it to the American Benchcraft belt, you can see, I mean, the, the American Benchcraft one is, is almost twice as thick. Over the years, this thing has stretched out significantly. I've been plus or minus five pounds the same weight for at least eight years now. And as you can see, this thing has stretched to the point where I've actually had to use three different belt holes uh, to keep it fitting. And if you're like me, I don't like replacing things like belts or sunglasses or watches like I may add things to my collection, but in general, I really just wanna buy something and keep it and know that it's gonna last me for a long time. And that's one of the things Carl talks about on his channel is you know, buying a high quality item uh, wants to replace maybe two or three purchases and ultimately you know, saving you some money, having a little bit more value there. Like I said, I've had that belt for probably at least five, six years or so, and at 20 bucks, it's going to take this American Benchcraft belt, you know, four times that amount, really for the value, at least from dollar perspective, to be equal. So, you know, I hope this belt lasts 20 years, but I don't know if it will. But what I can say is that it is a very, very beautifully made belt. It's pretty no frills. Uh, that's one of the things that I love about American Benchcraft products is 
they're all very simple just good quality leather nice brass rivets uh i really like this antique brass buckle um i just think it gives it you know some of that old world character something that looks timeless it doesn't have uh, you know, a, a name brand stamped across the front of it that I really don't care to see or show anyone ever anyway. As a matter of fact, this belt doesn't say American Benchcraft on it anywhere. You know, that's how confident they are in their product that you're going to like it, enjoy it so much that you're not gonna worry about who made it because you're probably gonna own this thing for a really, really, really long time. So I guess the question is, is a belt that cost $80 worth the money versus one that costs like 20 bucks? Well, there's a lot of different factors that go into it. Again, this one is made in the USA. I would prefer to support like small businesses here in the US. It makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I'm contributing to the economy in a positive way other than just like blatant consumerism and just pumping money into corporations. I was always a bargain hunter and quite honestly, I still am. You're gonna see a lot more of that in future videos just to see how cheap and how frugal I can be. I can honestly say that that one's gonna last me at least twice as long as the other one and I don't foresee myself like growing out of wearing a nice leather brown belt. So 80 bucks, if I get 10 years out of it, I feel pretty good about that. It's even got some patina here, uh, you know, mostly from where my cat has bitten it. Um, I guess he has good taste in leather. Anyways, I'm pretty happy with it. And I anticipate that I'm gonna remain happy with it, at least as happy with a belt as I can possibly be for a long time. I recommend if you're in the market for a belt, check out American Benchcraft Goods. I got this one on Amazon. Uh, they do have an Amazon store on there with their full line of products. So check it out, see what you like, order something up, take a look at it. And you know, the good thing about Amazon is like, if you're not super happy with it, you can always send it back. But I think you're gonna be pretty pleased with what you get if you take the plunge on this belt from American Benchcraft. If you like content like this, me talking about $80 belts and $100 t-shirts and stuff like that. Actually, this is the $35 one I got from Naked and Famous. I'm absolutely loving this thing. Drop down, hit that like button, and pop into the comment box. What's the most expensive belt you've purchased? How much money is too much to spend on a belt? I don't know. We'll catch you next time, bye.